Okay, here I have a very interesting limit question for you guys. We are going to talk about which one is wrong. So what I'm talking about? Well, I give you guys three limits, and then I tell you that they are all equal to one. Which one is wrong? All right? Pause the video and think about this first. Done? Okay. Uh, before we continue, though, I would like to just make this super super clear. All right. So. Notice if we just put zero plus was just zero into all the axes here, then we will be looking at zero to the zero's power, right? In all these three situations. Now, before we continue, seriously, I would just have to make this right here. For limit, when you just kind of plugging zero into here and here, okay, this right here, once we get zero to zero, this is an indeterminate form, meaning that we cannot draw any conclusion unless we do more work. So why is zero to a zero power is indeterminate because it's on my shirt already, right? So keep that in mind. But anyway, though, if today we're just talking about computation, right? So for example, if I'm just asking you, uh, two to the third power, this is of course two times two times two. This is equal to eight. Yeah, that's computation. But if we are talking about zero to the zero as a computation question, oh, this is debatable. Is it undefined or is it? One, I don't want to get into that here. So I'll just say for computation, if we see zero to the zero, I will just tell you that this is very debatable. Well, I actually say there is no agreement on this yet. So I'm just going to put this down right now. I think this is the best response that I can give you guys at the moment. Is it one or is it undefined? You guys can. Talk about it in the comment section, all right? But anyway, which one is wrong? I will tell you, B is wrong, all right? Uh, so let's see how we can do this. So here's the thing. I'm just going to use graphs to show you guys all these three situations, all right? So when we have the limit as x approaching zero plus x to the zero's power, let's graph that function first. So let's just take a look right here. If we want to make a graph for y is equal to x to the zero's power, this is pretty redundant, but like if you really put down the function in this form, then you just have to follow the rule. For example, right here, let's see, if x is equal to 2, then 2 to the zero's power, by definition, this is just equal to 1. So that's going to be right here. So I'm just going to say 2, and then we have 1. And then if we have x is equal to 4, 4 to the zero, it's also equal to 1. If we have 0 0.1 to the zero's power, and just imagine that, so that's 0 0.1 for the x, put it here, we will also get 1, all right? And however, if we have x is equal to 0 here, as I said earlier, for computation now, there is no agreement. So I'm just going to put an open circle, right? Like this. And then if we connect the dots, we will get... A horizontal line and in fact if x is equal to negative 1 it also works so let's say if we have negative 1 for the x value put it here negative 1 to the zero's power that will also give us 1 so we actually have the left hand side as well it's just that when x is equal to 0 uh, I will purposely put an open circle like this because of that all right so from here I can tell you that the limit as x approaching 0 plus of the function x to the zero's power, we will get one. And again, the y value here is one, so perhaps I'll put it down like this to make it more clear. Done deal. For the second one though, again, let's talk about the graph. So if we make a graph for y is equal to zero to the x power, let's see what will happen. For example, if x is equal to two, zero to the second power, we get zero, so it's right here. If x is equal to 4, 0 to the 4th power, 0. If x is equal to 0 0.1, 0 to the 0 0.1 power, still 0. Alright? And if we put x is equal to 0, again, I will just put an open circle here, so I'll just erase that. And I'm just going to connect the dots right here. And choose to be told, in fact, we can have negative numbers here. For example, if x is equal to negative 1, 
guess what? We will end up with 0 to the negative 1, and that will give us 1 over 0. And for sure, we can say that, don't say in infinity. For computational thing, this right here is undefined. Now I'll just put on und safe space. So we do not have the left hand side. And as you can see, this is the graph that we have. So based on this, we can see that when we have the limit as x approaching 0 plus of this function, we actually end up with 0. The five value is just approaching 0. All right. So it's now equal to 1. It's 0. Done. Now, this is perhaps the most interesting one because this is the typical one that you will learn in your Calculus 1 class. I'll give you guys a graph first though. So, I'm not going to give you guys the detail because I don't have all the space, but I do have a graph for this uh, different video, so you guys can check that out. But if you graph it, when x is equal to 0, uh, again, I will have an open circle, but it will be here, all right? And in fact, the graph will look like this. You go down a little bit and then you go up. Yeah, you actually go down and then when x is equal to 1, 1 to the first power is just 1. So we have this. And then this right here, we do have a minimum. If you know the answer, tell me what the x for you. I have done a lot of videos on this already. So you guys work this out for me, right? For what x for you will give us a minimum. Anyway, Based on this picture, I can tell you that when we have x approaching 0 plus of x to the x power, right, we're just looking at the right-hand side, we get 1. So, yeah, done. So this is again 1. All right. And in fact, this right here is very interesting because nowadays, if you use some more of a powerful calculator to graph y is equal to x to the x power, you can actually see the left-hand side because some of the x values are actually okay. So I can only tell you that this picture is only for y equals x to the x power when x is greater than zero. If you want to see the left-hand side, you just have to use some good negative numbers in this situation. So I will just tell you guys that what are some good negative numbers that we can use, good negative x values. For example, can x be equal to negative 1? Yes. Because if x is equal to negative 1, then we can get y equals negative 1 raised to the negative 1 power. Work that out, we will end up with negative 1. So when x is equal to negative 1, we go down to negative 1. But the problem is, can x be negative 2? Sorry, negative 1 over 2. <laughs> no. Because this way, we are going to get y equals, we will have a negative, let me put this down like this, y equals negative 1 over 2 inside, and then raised to the negative 1 over 2. And then we will actually end up with, let's write this down as 1 over because of negative power, and then turn that into a square root. Yeah, And then we see that this right here is 0 0.5. But it's negative. Guess what? This is imaginary. So in fact, this is not a good number. For This is not a good x value for this. So I will pause this. Can x be a different negative number? Yes. For example, if x is equal to negative one third, this is again once a good <laughs> once again a good negative x value. You can just go ahead and try it. But I will just write it down with negative one third raised to the negative one third power. This is actually good. And the value will be negative and uh, you can just work that out. If x is equal to negative two, you actually get past the output. So yeah, then you just kind of plug in, plug in and you get like lots of dots. And then the left hand side, in fact, it's not contiguous, but it's possible to get an idea of how that behaves. But anyway though, if you just look at these three limits, I think it's pretty interesting. This one is wrong because it should be zero. So hopefully this right here helps. If you guys want to check out more calculus videos like this, check out my playlist over here. That's it.